Kaylee here and I'm so excited to share with you all that we are starting a new unit today, unit 10, session one today. And what that means when we start a new unit is that we get a whole new key passage we get to memorize and we get a whole new big picture question and answer and we get a whole new set of true stories from the Bible that we get to learn. So it's so exciting. But today I'm gonna start off by explaining what our big picture question is. What's something we're gonna be answering each week and that's related to the stories we're gonna be learning. And the big picture question is this, why does sin separate us from God? Hmm. Well, the answer to that is because God is holy, because God is perfect, sin has broken our relationship with God. Sin has separated us from God. And so you get to see how that relates to the stories that we're going to learn. But the amazing thing about that is it always leads to Jesus. Each story, it always leads up to Jesus and that Jesus mends our relationship with God. Jesus heals the broken relationship, right? We get to have a relationship with the Lord through Jesus. And it's an amazing thing. So I encourage you to open up a physical Bible, have it open, because we will be in 1 Samuel chapters 8 through 10. So have your Bible open so you're ready to read and receive what we have for you. So I'm so excited for you to learn from this story. Enjoy. Hi everyone, it's me, Megan, and this is Jesse. Hi. Uh, Megan, what are you drinking? I am drinking a smoothie. Mm. Ooh, can I have some? I really don't think you would like this smoothie, Jesse. Oh, come on, Megan, please, 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 please. I don't know, Jesse. It has spinach in it. I'm sure I will like it. Please, Megan, please. Okay, here you go. Yeah. Ugh, that is terrible. I tried to warn you, Jesse. I should have listened to you. Yep, just like the Israelites in today's Bible story should have listened. The Israelites decided they wanted a king like the nations around them, but God was their king. They didn't need a human king to rule over them, but they didn't listen. Let's find out what happened. Samuel was a judge in Israel for many years. As a judge, Samuel's job was to make important decisions and lead God's people. Samuel was getting old, so he chose his sons to be judges. But Samuel's sons were not good judges. Some of the leaders in Israel told Samuel, you are a good judge, but your sons are not like you. We don't want them to lead us. The people around us have a king. We want a king too. Samuel did not know what to say, so he prayed to God. God said, Samuel, do not feel bad. They are not saying they do not want you as their leader. They are saying they do not want me. Give the people a king, but warn them what an earthly king can do. Samuel warned the Israelites that they would have to do whatever the king wanted. A king could make their sons serve in the army. He could make their daughters work for him, or he could take away their fields and servants. Still, the Israelites did not care. Give us a king, they said. So God told Samuel to give the people what they wanted. Then Samuel told the leaders of Israel to go back to their cities and wait for a king. Later, a man named Saul came to Samuel. Saul was tall and handsome. He was looking for his father's missing donkeys. Samuel invited Saul to have dinner with him. He told Saul that his family would be important to everyone in Israel. Saul didn't understand. He wasn't from a big family. His tribe, the tribe of Benjamin, was the smallest tribe in Israel. Still, Samuel gave Saul the best spot at his dinner table. The next morning, Samuel poured oil on Saul's head. You will be king, Samuel said. Samuel gave Saul some instructions and sent him home. The Spirit of God was with Saul. The Israelites did not trust God. They wanted a king. 
God gave the Israelites a king, but he had a plan to send his son Jesus to be king over the whole world. Jesus would be the perfect king. Jesus would bring peace and save people from sin. Samuel was a judge over Israel. When he was old, Samuel chose his sons, Joel and Abijah, to be judges. There was a problem though. Joel and Abijah were not good judges like their father. Joel and Abijah were unfair and dishonest. The leaders of Israel went to Samuel. You were a good judge, they said, but your sons have not followed your example. We don't want them to lead us. We want a king like the nations around us. Samuel wasn't sure how to respond, so he prayed to God. God said, Samuel, they are not rejecting you. They are rejecting me as king. Give them what they want, but make sure you warn them what it will be like to have an earthly king. Samuel explained to the Israelites what rights an earthly king would have. A king could make their son serve in the army, he could make their daughters work for him, or he could take away their fields and servants. Samuel warned that the people would regret asking for a king, but the Israelites didn't care. Give us a king, they said. So God told Samuel to give the people what they wanted. Then Samuel told the leaders of Israel to go back to their cities and wait for a king. One day, a man named Saul came to Samuel. Saul was tall and handsome. He was looking for his father's missing donkeys. Samuel invited Saul to have dinner with him. He told Saul that his family would be important to everyone in Israel. Saul didn't understand. He wasn't from a big family. His tribe, the tribe of Benjamin, was the smallest tribe in Israel. Still, Samuel gave Saul the best spot at his dinner table. The next morning, Samuel poured oil on Saul's head. You will be king, Samuel said. Samuel gave Saul some instructions and sent him home to wait for the right time to start ruling over the Israelites. The Spirit of God was with Saul. God intended for a heavenly king to rule over Israel, but the Israelites did not trust God's plan. They wanted a king like the nations around them. God had a better plan to eventually send his son, Jesus, to be the perfect king forever.